My primary training <laughs> is academic. But next to my work as a teacher in dance and performance theory, I've been learning certain circus disciplines on my own and eventually including that in my work. In a series of lecture performances, I've used theoretical concepts related to the performing arts to explore and extend my physical knowledge of circus, as well as my theoretical understanding of the performing arts. In this presentation, I have tried to start the other way around. I have started from three physical practices that I have constructed based on the challenges I believe I need to face as a practitioner. And I would like to start from these practices in order to reflect on what this has meant to me as a teacher in dance theory to enter this kind of solitary learning process. The first practice is a method trying to deal with the interaction of former and future knowledge and the necessity to exercise movement habits that are no longer productive. In the process of learning a physical art form, it has been extremely important to me to rely on the transfer of knowledge from one field to the other, from the field of philosophical aesthetics and performance theory to the, to the practice of the performing arts. Not only have I relied on, certain, on a certain training in structuring my own work, I have also tried to use my conceptual and theoretical knowledge in order to make my approach to circus more specific. But the former knowledge one brings into the process is not only a help, it is also the grid through which this new material is seen and which may obscure certain aspects. Thus, my theoretical training has not always been only an advantage when approaching a physical or performative material. Not only have I been trained to sit still, I have also been trained to legitimize my work as theoretical and sometimes this even influences my body language in situations where these identities are put at stake. I believe that this experience of transfer and the difficulties in obtaining it has brought me closer to what dance and circus students encounter in their transitions between practice and theory. The second practice in this presentation is one I have been undertaking in order to challenge and strengthen my own proprioception through balancing without relying on visual information. To begin with, this practice rendered my body completely chaotic and unorganized and questioned the skills I thought I had acquired in handstand. On a more general level, the meeting with the concrete with the sensorial material that the process of learning a physical art form has brought with it has had a similar effect, but not only on a physical level. Through this confrontation with the concrete, some of my theoretical assumptions have also been questioned. My perception is put at stake. How come it feels like the right position but when I look at it, I realize that it is not. How come I can have such a clear memory of the right feeling, but, but be unable to reproduce it? But this perceptual unsettling also has consequences for my conceptual understanding of the performing arts. Suddenly, it is difficult to have clear opinions about how physical and performative material really works. My aesthetic convictions are shaken Certainty gives way to doubt. But this shock to perception or shock to thought um, also, in this shock to perception or in this shock to thought, new questions also make themselves felt. For instance, how come alignment works so differently upside down? Or 
In which way does our perception build the base of our cognitive processes? In the third practice, I've been focusing on the difficulty of making that sensorial encounter alive, even with it, when it has become part of your habit. Vertical rope was the first circus discipline I learned, but I tried to find ways of keeping triggering the sensorial meeting, even in a technically well-known material. Perhaps this is also the most difficult, even as a teacher, to continue to stretch yourself to the limit, to create that little discomfort that keeps your questions alive so that you can be in the midst of the reflection with the students. I would like to think of this meeting with the concrete, sensorial matter as what Deleuze called a pedagogy of the senses. But if creating shocks to perception is one way of triggering thought, then my question as a teacher becomes, is it possible to create such a shock to perception for others? And in that case, how? This is indeed a difficult challenge, as it relies on a most individual experience. In my teaching, I have tried to explore the format of the lecture performance as a way of communicating theoretical explanations, as well as addressing the senses but I also try to rely on the shock that the students' perception and the students, that the students' physical practice creates on their perception and try to help them construct chains of thought starting from there. The difficulty of the teacher is to perceive that which is almost imperceptible, not only to herself, but even to others. It is a pedagogy of the senses, but twice removed which makes strong demands on our empathy, but which also demands that we dare let the students work their senses on their own.
Questions, or you want to go to a course? <laughs> Anyone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You? Anyone want to try before we take it away? <laughs> Liana. Uh, thank you, Camila. I wonder, could you give an example of? some exact things that students have said concerning this problem for them of moving from their corporeal sort of sensations to what they mm. consider, how they consider theory okay. in that relationship. Some examples. Uh, it's more like the examples are so many that it's hard to come up with, <laughs> actually. Uh, I often experience that there's a certain, uh, how to say, that, that that transition is always not always smooth, even if, if there's a there's a will to do it, and yet it's sometimes difficult. Let's say if you are doing a a student is doing an individual project and is taking inspiration from theoretical material, and then trying to construct methods of how to work with that on the floor. So even if there's a strong will to do it, it might be difficult to find that translation because you are translating from one media into the other and how, how exact should that translation be, like how literal should, the, let's say you want to work with improvisation tasks on the floor, how literal should the translation be, how close to the theoretical material do you want to stay. So that could be one, that could be one way. Another thing is just, um, how to say, the, difficult, the different bodily attitudes that, uh, let's say, reading hardcore theory demands of you and what you do when you're working on the floor and how to make the transition in from, from one attitude to another. Um, but I think that could be two examples. Mm. Wait. <laughs> you, um, you certainly shocked my senses and perception up there. Um, I was just wondering if I understood you were saying you were trying to shock your own um, at the same time to keep it somehow on the edge or fresh or yeah. beyond. Uh, I just wondered where in what you showed us you, you yeah. did that yeah. to yourself. Um, that's definitely something I'm trying. It's not always easy. Sometimes I shock myself uh, by, I would say, by mistake. Let's say that I'm struggling to learn something that is really difficult for me. That has happened <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and so, so that in itself is a shock. For instance, I've had to reorganize my understanding of my shoulders in order to learn how to do handstand. And uh, that's a continuous work. And for instance, when I decided to do this blindfolded sequence, I realized that I thought I had some kind of idea what was going on like between here and here. But as soon as I was blind blindfolded, I had no idea, absolutely no idea to begin with. Uh, so that was a very, uh, how to say, a very clear shock to my perception, and it took. Uh, I still don't master it completely, and I'd, of course it's difficult. But uh, it certainly is a shock to perception to do that. In the rope, it's more like, how to say, <laughs> there's a general shock there, which is just the fact that it hurts, uh, and then you can try to. The body gets used to it, the skin gets used to it, but you can try to to trigger that. Um, and I try to, for instance, in this sequence, I started from very, very simple exercises, so not like uh, hardcore tricks, and try to twist them as much as possible to, to get them beyond my habit of what I would do with that figure. Uh, so that's the way I try to work with it in that sequence. Mm. Anyone else? Okay, we thank you very much.